Hi everyone, feeling lost in the world of Kubernetes networking? This video will break down the basics of services, different services types, and how to export your application to the world outside the cluster. We'll demo this concept using a dual stack, three node bare metal Kubernetes cluster. As the load balancing layer, we'll explore the fantastic Metal LB solution. We'll cover everything you need to know, how it works, how to set it up, and the feature it offers. For those of you new to the scene, I'm Philip. Let's get started. Let's describe the network topology we'll be using. Our setup is very basic. We have three node bare metal Kubernetes cluster. It's running Flannel in VXLAN mode as the container network interface. A cluster has dual stack networking, so it can utilize both EPV4 and EPV6 protocols simultaneously. If you are interested in how it was built, please let me know down in the comments and I will walk you through the steps. Nodes are connected to EPV4 network 192.168.10/24. Node 1 has .230 IP. Node 2 has .231 IP and Node 3 has .232 IP. Nodes are also connected to EPV6 network uh, 2001 colon 470 colon 61 BB colon 10 slash 64. Node 1 has uh, colon 230 IP, Node 2 has colon 231 IP and Node 3 has colon 232 IP. On top of that, we have a pod network that spans across all nodes and holds our pods. Uh, the pod network is 10.244/16 for the EPV4 and FC00:10:244/56 for EPV6. Uh, mind that we are using private IPs for both EPV4 and EPV6. Our service network, from which we assign cluster IPs, is 10.96/16 for EPV4 and FC00:10:96/108 for EPV6. To kick things off, let's take a look at the foundation. Pod-to-pod -pod communication. There is where the magic happens, how our applications actually talk to each other. We'll be using a simple Nginx deployment to illustrate these concepts. First, let's look at our deployment manifest. Notice three things. Replicas count is set to three, so this deployment will create three pods. Spec template metadata label, this section tags each pod created by the deployment with app equals Nginx label. Spec selector match labels. This section indicates that pods with the app equal nginx label will be managed by the deployment. Okay, let's apply the manifest file. Deployment has been created. Let's see how it looks. There are three pods running. Few observations. Each pod is on a separate node. Kubernetes scheduler takes various factors into consideration such as resource requirements, node capacity, affinity rules, taints, but the main reason for placing the pods across multiple nodes is high availability. By spreading pods across nodes, a single node failure won't take down your entire application. Pod IP addresses belong to the pod subnet, that's 10.244/16 network. In Flannel, every node has a separate slash 24 range assigned from the entire pod subnet. Let's try calling those Nginx pods. For that purpose, I will create a new pod with Alpine Linux. We'll use that pod to test connectivity with other pods and services within the cluster. I will update the packages list and install necessary tools. Let's try calling engine X pod on node 1 from our Alpine pod. Works. Let's try calling engine X pod on node 2. Works. Let's try calling engine X pod on node 3. Works. 
This also applies to EPV6. I will check the EPV6 address of Nginx pod on node 3 and call that pod via its EPV6 address. What we've learned so far is that pods can communicate with each other freely no matter which node they are on as the pod network is flat. Moreover, each pod has its own unique IP. However, soon enough you'll learn that the IP address that pod uses is not stable. Let's simulate that by deleting a pod. This pod has 2.18 IP address. Let's delete that pod. The new pod that was created to replace the old one has 2.19 IP address. In other words, you cannot rely on pod IP address to communicate. Pods come and go as you deploy new application versions or scale out your deployment or even node fails. To address this issue, Kubernetes has a concept of a service. Service provides a consistent way to access a set of pods, regardless of underlying infrastructure or individual pod IP addresses. There are a few types of services. First one I'd like to show you is called a headless service. Let's look at its definition. Few important things to mention. Service name. This is how we'll be accessing the service within the cluster. Selector. This will match all the pods that have the app equals Nginx label. In other words, in the deployment, we label all pods with the same tag and then use that tag to identify pods the service will route traffic to. The service type is cluster IP, but the cluster IP value is set to none. This means the service itself won't have a dedicated IP address. Let me deploy the service and check if it got created. But wait, service will not have an IP? How will we access it? Simple, let's query the DNS for the service name. We'll get a list of pod IPs. Basically, a DNS record is created for every pod associated with the service. Important thing to notice is that every time you query the DNS, it will return a different pod IP. Basically, load balancing the traffic. Finally, let's try calling our service by name. Works. Another type of service is called cluster IP. It exposes the service on a cluster internal IP. This type of service is accessible only within the cluster. Let me open its manifest. It's almost identical to the previous one. There's the service name to access the service and the selector to identify the pods it handles. Service type is cluster IP. Let's deploy our service. If we list the services, we notice that the Nginx service got an IP assigned from the services subnet. Now, we can use that IP to call our service. Let me get more information about it with kubectl describe. That's the IP and port we'll use to access the service, and those are the endpoints the traffic will be load balanced to. Cluster IP is just a mini load balancer that provides a stable frontend IP. Under the hood, cluster IP service is just a few IP tables rules. First, the destination IP is matched in the cube services chain. Then a DNAT is performed based on the random probability. Some container network interfaces use EPVS instead of IP tables. EPVS is faster at scale and offer more load balancing algorithms. Let's try accessing that service. We can do it by name, as the name is registered in DNS, or we can access the service by IP. Mind that cluster IP service address is static, it won't change. Even if we reduce the number of pods to zero, the service IP will remain constant. Hence, using cluster IP is very convenient way for various applications to talk to each other within the cluster. One thing I'd like to mention is that the Nginx cluster IP service that we've just created is EPV4 only. To make a service accessible also via EPV6, 
we just need to add a dual stack option. Let me deploy the service and describe it. Now the IP family is EPV4 and EPV6. We can access the service via EPV4 address or via EPV6 address. Mind that both EPV6 record and EPV4 record are stored in the DNS. It's up to the client application to use EPV4 or EPV6 protocol. Remember, cluster IP is not a proxy. So on a dual stack service, if you connect via EPV4, the target pod will receive EPV4 traffic. If you connect via EPV6, the target pod will receive EPV6 traffic. Okay, we got our three services. Uh, regular EPV4 cluster IP, dual stack cluster IP and headless service. What if we want to access our pods from outside the cluster? Both the pod network and service network are accessible only within the cluster. Luckily, there are few ways to tackle that issue. Easiest solution to expose a service outside the cluster is by assigning an external IP to that service. To do that, we need to first add the external IP to the node itself. Let me open node 1 network configuration and add 10.209 EPV4 address and 10 colon 209 EPV6 address. Now, let's go to our service definition. Exposing a service is as simple as adding the external IP section and providing external IPs. Let's apply the manifest. If we look at our services, the Nginx EXT service has two external IP addresses assigned. Let's try accessing the service from outside the cluster. Works. Mind that this service is also exposed to inside of the cluster via the cluster IP. Exposing the service via external IP has one major drawback. External IP is only assigned to a single node. Of course, once this node receives traffic, it will balance it across all the pods on all the nodes. However, uh, if that node goes down, so goes the external access. You could try building a solution like Kiba LiveD to have this IP highly available, but there are better options. Another way to expose your application to the external world is called a node port service. This type exposes the service on each node's IP at static port. It's accessible externally to the cluster using the node's IP address and the node port. Let's open the service definition. We see two new parameters. First one is the service type set to node port. Second one is the node port set to 30080. The service of type node port exposes the pods on port 80 TCP internally within the cluster, but additionally on port 30080 TCP on each node. Let's apply the configuration. If we look at the services list, we see that this particular service has type node port and is exposed to port 80 internally and port 30080 on each node. Let's try accessing the service from outside of the cluster. I will call the node 1 IP on port 30080, then node 2 IP on port 30080, and node 3 IP on port 30080. Of course, I can also reach the services via EPV6 external IP. Node port service can receive traffic on any of the nodes. Once it receives the traffic, it will balance it through all the pods within the cluster. This is not super convenient for the external client to use high ports and multiple IPs to access a service. Moreover, the failover logic. What to do if a node goes down? Uh, this is something the client would have to take care of. To address this issue, there is a load balancer service type. It acts as a traffic director for your application running within the cluster. It distributes incoming network traffic across 
multiple pods of your application deployed on various worker nodes. It ensures high availability. If a pod or whole node goes down, it will direct the traffic to healthy pods. Moreover, it ensures scalability. As you scale your application by adding more pods, the load balancer automatically distributes traffic among them. On top of that, the load balancer makes your application accessible from outside the Kubernetes cluster using a single stable IP address. Let's open a load balancer service manifest. The IP family is dual stack. The service type is load balancer. Let's deploy it. If we look at the service, we see the internal cluster IP has been created, a node port on random high port has been created, but there is no external IP. Why is that? If your Kubernetes cluster is cloud native, like uh, Google GKE, uh, Amazon EKS or Microsoft AKS, then creating a load balancer service will automatically provision a cloud load balancer. If, however, you are running a bare metal cluster, then Kubernetes does not come with an integrated load balancing solution. Metal LB steps in as a software solution to address this challenge. It acts as a load balancer implementation for bare metal Kubernetes clusters, enabling external traffic distribution across your pods. Uh, there are a few ways to deploy Metal LB to your cluster. You can do it via Helm chart, customize Metal LB operator. I will deploy it via a manifest file. Among other things, this will provision a daemon set with Metal LB controller. Controller is responsible for assigning IP addresses to services. There is also a daemon set that deploys a speaker pod on every node. Speakers are responsible for announcing the service to the external world, either via layer 2 announcement, that are ARP for EPV4 or NDP for EPV6, or via BGP. Today, I will just demonstrate the layer 2 announcement as it does not require any special configuration of the environment. Next time, I will show you how BGP announcements work. After deploying the Metal LB solution, our service still does not have external IP assigned. That is to be expected. First, we need to define the IPs to assign to the load balancer service. In order to do that, we need to create IP address pool custom resource. Let me open its manifest file. We just need to define the address space as a range or in CIDR notation. Let's create that resource. Okay, it has been created. Mind that you can create multiple IP address pools and later decide which one to use while defining the balancer service. Next, we need to announce the IP to the external world. We'll be doing a layer 2 announcement. To do that, we need to create a custom resource of L2 advertisement type. This is how it looks. Let's apply the manifest file. If we look at the services next to the load balancer type, there are two external IPs from the IP pool range that we've defined. Let's try accessing the service from outside the cluster. How it works under the hood is the speaker will reply to ARP request for the IP of the service. We see that for this particular load balancer IP, the ARP replies will be sent from node 2. Let's capture traffic on node 2. If we try connecting from the outside of the cluster, we see that node 2 replied to the ARP request. The same method applies to EPV6. Let's perform neighbor discovery for the load balancer IPv6 address. We see the MAC address and link local address that matches node 2. There are certain limitations of Metal LB working in layer 2 mode. For a specific service, all traffic arrives via a single host. Your service's ingress bandwidth is limited to the bandwidth of a single node. Of course, the traffic is later load balanced among other pods on the other nodes, but the incoming traffic arrives via a single node only. If you create a different service, 
it will advertise its IP on a different node. Another thing to mention is a failover scenario when a node hosting the IP dies. In such case, the IP will be announced from a different node with uh, gratuitous ARP. Basically, the new node will send a new ARP to update the client cache. Another nice feature of Metal LB is that you can request a specific IP from the address pool. Let me show you what the configuration looks like. We just provide load balancer IP annotation. That's it. Let's deploy the service. There's our IP. We can also request IP from a specific address pool, assuming we have multiple pools defined. This is how it looks. It's useful if we have, let's say, external IP pool and internal IP pool. Another thing I'd like to show you is local traffic policy. If we set our external traffic policy to local, the traffic will arrive only at the local pods within a cluster. Basically, if traffic arrives at node 2, it will go to pods at node 2. If the traffic arrives at node 3, it will be directed only to pods at node 3. Because kube proxy is not involved, your pods can see the real IP the traffic originates from. In BGP mode, the traffic will be split across multiple nodes, but the split will be uneven. If node 1 and node 3 have only one pod and node 2 has two pods, pods on node 1 and node 3 will take two thirds of the traffic and pods on node 2 will take only one third of the traffic. Moreover, uh, in layer 2 mode, the traffic is arriving only via a single node, so only pods on that node will process the traffic. Let's apply the manifest file. Let's check the description of the service. It's being announced from node 3. Let's check which pod will be processing the traffic and see the logs on that pod. Now, let me call the service from outside the cluster. Do you see that? We can see the real source IP of the client. Last thing I'd like to show you is sharing the IP address by multiple services. By default, whenever you create a new load balancer service, it will be assigned a new IP. However, it's possible to collocate multiple services behind a single IP. There are two conditions. First, the service needs to point exactly to the same pods. So, pod selectors need to be identical. Second is that services need to be on the different ports or use different protocols. Let's open both services configurations side by side. Allowed shared IP annotation needs to match on both. Load balancer IP also needs to match on both. Finally, the selector needs to match on both. Let's deploy both services. We see two services behind the same external IP, but using different ports. Uh, let's try connecting to the load balancer IP on port 80 TCP. Now, let's try connecting to the same IP on port 443 TCP. Works. All right, folks, that's all we have for conquering Kubernetes networking basics with Metal LB. I hope this video helped you feel a little less lost in the world of containerized applications. Remember, practice makes perfect, so don't hesitate to fire up your own cluster and experiment. If you enjoyed this, uh, hit that like button and subscribe for more Kubernetes adventures. Don't forget to leave a comment below with any questions or topics uh, you'd like to cover next. Until then, happy containerizing!